After performing the blind spot a little over a month ago, the vehicle came back for multiple reasons. The windshield was replaced a second time and the blind spot codes had returned. After checking the codes and Subaru bulletins, we determined that the blind spot sensor needed to be replaced as this is a common issue on first generation Subarus that came with the blind spot sensor option. A new one is pretty expensive and the owner opted to use a used one. We installed it and what we learned about used blind spot sensors is that in this early model Outback, a used slave blind spot sensor did not require calibration. We are not sure if the master would be the same. The master on this car is on the driver's side, the slave is on the passenger side, and we replaced the slave. Upon replacing it, the codes were cleared and we were able to drive this car and have a working blind spot sensor without performing any calibration. However, prior to returning it to the customer, we are going to calibrate it so the car knows what true zero is and we could return it with good faith that we did the right job. You're gonna watch me now set up for the blind spot. I have a uh, custom made plumb bob, which is really nothing more than a Honda plumb bob with the Subaru grommet that Subaru instructions refer for you to remove from the front floor panel. You have to ensure that you actually go through the instructions, whether it's on your tool or from the OE, because they are explicitly different. The slave side has different measurements from the rear bumper than the master side. In addition to that, there are different points for the Impreza and the Outback. The Impreza is more along the center of the bumper line, and the Outback is slightly off center. They show you where the grommets are, but if you don't read the OE instructions, you won't know. Please make sure you check all instructions before doing any of these calibrations on any car. Yeah. Subaru instructions state 44, 30 millimeters from the front passenger side grommet, and it states 2,005 millimeters from the rear bumper grommet, and you essentially want to make a triangle with your lines coming out. I'm going to now use my grommet and my plumb bob in the front, use my plumb bob in the rear, make my measurements and set up my target placement. The Subaru instructions state that there's a grommet behind the control arm. Uh, I can show you that on the screen, but I am going to look down, find this grommet and pull it out. That's what it looks like. Here's my plumb bob setup. I now take my grommet with the plumb bob through it, put it in its place, and let my plumb bob really hang down like so. And now I can set up my measuring tape 4,430 millimeters out towards the back of the car. I've set it out. You can see my 4430 is there. However, I don't really know what angle I'm going to be coming at off of the rear. Now, I'm going to set up my rear line so we can see where I'm supposed to be. Okay, you might be looking at these two measuring tapes thinking, what am I supposed to do next? Essentially, you want them to meet at the exact measurement points. What Subaru is telling you is that at 4,430 millimeters from that point, it is going to intersect with this angle at 2,005 millimeters. This is weird at first, especially if math or geometry wasn't your thing, but it becomes second nature with practice. My goal here is to close this gap where those two measurements meet. There is no standard for doing this. You're essentially keeping everything as straight as you can and making your lines match. The car is gonna tell you if you're right or wrong. Like anything in ADOS, precision comes with practice. I'm labeling out what you can and should do, and it's taking longer to talk about than it does to actually do. Now you're gonna see me adjust the measuring tape so the measurements meet, and when I'm done, I will show you exactly what that looks like from the top view.
Here you can see. Forty-four thirty is intersecting at two thousand and five. Because we can't place our target on top of our tape, because that doesn't really work well. We're gonna use our lasers and draw one line at 4430, and use the other laser and draw the line at 2005. And then we can remove our measuring tape, and we should have a good angle for where this needs to be. Using the lasers, crossing the one at 4430 and the other at 2005, I'm now gonna remove this measuring tape. You're going to see these lines that look very similar to the Subaru instructions. You can see our lines intersecting at essentially our white point. And at the top of the target, you can see them lining up against the back, which coincides with how the Subaru instructions show that same X pattern. Now we're going to hook up and we are going to see where we end up. Achieving 0.0, .0 in a blind spot calibration is not something that happens all the time. I'm extremely happy that it worked out this well in this video. And I hope that everybody learns that you have to think a little bit outside the box when doing things like this in order to get it right. I've been doing this often enough to where I just kind of know where things go and things worked out exactly as they should after somebody who's practiced this for the last eight years. If you're interested in learning ADOS, everything that I teach here will help you accomplish 0.0, .0 calibrations or something very, very close to it, but you can't expect to be perfect every time. I'm very satisfied with the result for the blind spot. I'm now going to turn the car around and perform the front camera calibration and complete our Subaru so we can return it to its owner.